We're going to continue our work in Module 2 Sequence Base Similarity Data. And just to touch base again, we did our basic information. We have it all done. And as I scroll past, I will need my protein sequence for KZ00010. So I'm going to highlight and copy it. And then I'm going to click back into the Sequence Based Similarity Data. We've already done a blast which told us a couple of the closest matches to our protein sequence with KZ00010 amongst other bacteria, And we detailed that, the length of it, how accurate and close that was, or the probability that it was due to chance. Uh, then we just most recently did a CDD search. And we found that KZ00010 has a COG, an ortholog, that is present, a very similar uh, gene that seems to be present in a bunch of different bacteria. So this COG, your Clostridium bacteria may not have a COG at all. And it may be, it probably is not going to be this exact COG. So that's what you would do in the CDD search. We're at the point where we need to do a tea coffee. Okay, and we'll talk about what that gets us. So go ahead and control click and it'll open a tab and it says it's a multiple sequence alignment program. Basically, what we are going to do is go back to our blast and we're going to get about 10 close matches, including our own, and it's going to visually kind of set it up for us. The blast link, if you didn't favorite it, you just go back up into that. It's above CDD. Go up to where it was blast. And I'm going to control click here too. We always click protein blast. I paste in my amino acid sequence, making sure the FASTA header is there. And again, the this tool will ignore this first line. It's there for me to remember. And this is where the FASTA header becomes really, really helpful. Um, I don't want Swiss Prot this time. For tea coffee, I need NR. That means it's going to take longer. But once I select that, I go ahead and I blast it. And here we are. Mine uh, took about a minute to run, because remember, it's going through all proteins that have been uh, analyzed by a computer at this point, even though most of them are kind of still theoretical and haven't been analyzed like you're analyzing your Clostridium gene. So I pop down, and I see this stuff from the other day. Okay, so this is KZ00010 amino acid sequence, and it is the NR database. I'm just double checking. And I pop down, and I'm going to do something a little bit different from what we did before. I'm going to be comparing my amino acid sequence to maybe like the top 10 similar ones. Now, it might be easy for you to say, okay, fine, 10 boxes. But there's a couple things we need to remember. First of all, before we excluded this one because we saw it was Chytococcus sedentarius, that its query cover was 100% and the identity of this amino acid sequence was 100% ours. What this one is, is us. And this time, I do want to include my, my gene or my protein here. So I did click us. Now what I'm going to click for my other 10 is I want low E values, which is not going to be a problem. Look at all the zeros. 0% 0 chance that this is just a random matchup, a random occurrence matchup. And I have really high query coverages, which means it's covering most of my sequence. And that's confirmed up here. All these really long red bars mean that there's more than 200 amino acids that are matching up or close. So this isn't going to be hard, but I'm going to follow some rules here. So if I look really closely, the first one is me. 100%, 100% identity. Okay, so I checked it. But look at what the second one is. It's also Chytococcus. So I don't want to double dip. The third one is Chytococcus. I'm not going to pick that either. That'd be triple dipping. Chytococcus, Chytococcus. But now I get to one that still has a really high query cover, zero E value. That means I'm going to click that one. But now that I click this one, I'm not going to pronounce it. Okay? I'm not going to, I'm going to stay away from this genus. And I don't want to pick other species of this genus again. I want to get a little bit of a range. So right below it, I still have high numbers over on the right, Serenococcus. Okay. But you see how this next one is the same genus as the one right here. So I don't want to get that repeat. I've got another repeat here to the one I just picked. If you see Serenococcus sp, that's 
all species of that genus kind of batch together. So that's going to be redundant again. So I'm going to go down a little bit further, and I see this one. And you could take either one. I'm just going to take the second one because it's a, a specific species. And then this one, the numbers still look good. So far I have one, two, three, four. Here's another one, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So what I have, just to summarize again, I've got my own sequence with a 100% identical identity. And then I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 other bacterial species, all of which report very low E value and a high query coverage. So at this point, I have a pretty good sampling. And I'm going to download. I want my FASTA, and I do want to pick the complete sequence and say continue. You'll open it with Notepad, which is fine. What I did, I went up to View, and I clicked, sorry, Format, and I said Word Wrap, and then it kind of became a little bit more friendly. But I'm going to make sure I scroll and copy all of it. I'm going to go back to my notebook, down to Tea Coffee. Sequences used for alignment, and I'm simply going to paste. And as I scroll back up through, and I'm going to kind of check it out. So I've got a FASTA header that says that it's me. I personally like to clean these up a little bit. <clears throat> and remember, the FASTA header is ignored by all of these tools. So if I clean that up, that's a nice, it's nicer for me. I know what I'm looking at. That means this whole section is Chytococcus sedentarius. I am going to clean up each one briefly just because I think it's worth the time. What you don't want to do is create hard returns where you create new lines. But this will shorten it up and make it a little bit friendlier. So I'm done cleaning that up. To me, it's worth it. And the next thing in our notebook that it looks for is a multiple sequence alignment. And that's what the Tea Coffee website is going to look for. So I'm going to grab what I just neatened up. So you just scroll. Make sure you get everything top to bottom, but nothing extra. Copy. And then you go to that window that we opened before, the tab, with Tea Coffee. Now this one can align up to 500 sequences. Okay, we have 11. It still will take it a minute. Okay, this is looking at how aligned these are, and it's going to give us a visual on it. <clears throat> and it's showing all 11 of the selections that I have, and it's showing the amino acid sequences in blocks of 50, along with some special symbols underneath. First thing uh, that we're going to look at are the symbols. A star means there's a perfect match. So anywhere where you see a star, look up, and you should see, well, yep, all Ms. In this case, oh, all Ws, right? So that's pretty easy. So this is 1 through 50, 51 to 100, and it just goes down through the whole protein, all these alignments, okay? A colon means that there is an amino acid there that has the same overall chemical function or biochemical properties. So L and V function similarly. So they put a colon. So do I's and V's. Okay? So that's what a colon means. It's pretty similar, but maybe there was a gene mutation or an amino acid substitution. A single dot, now we're getting off into, there's actually an amino acid there that doesn't really match well in terms of, it's biochemical properties. If you see a bunch of lines, that could be a gap that's introduced by the computer to make other places in here align. So you can see that Tetrasphera has this area where the computer didn't find a match. 
but then if it inserted a blank, it all of a sudden was aligning pretty well again. So the computer did that. We're going to click at the top where it says show colors. And it gets really pretty here all of a sudden. And what those colors mean, there's a key on page 53 of the training manual. And a red means that they're small and hydrophobic amino acids. Blue would mean it's an acidic amino acid. Pink or magenta would be a basic amino acid. And green would be a hydroxyl amino basic kind of quality group is on there. Okay, so we can see that the colors just confirm what the stars and colons and dots tell us. Where we see a star, the same color and same letter, highly conserved. Where we see a colon, we see the same color but a couple different letters. So the amino acids are still doing the same thing in influencing the shape of the protein. A single dot, though, you see some different colors in the column. So not so well conserved, but maybe semi-conserved. Okay, so one thing I need to do right away, look at that. In the middle, there's this weird funky area where it's there's a bunch of gaps where it doesn't match. And then, man, it's almost solid here. Look at all the stars. These really align well over here, but they got good scores, so they should align well. And I check, okay, everything looks good. I am going to copy everything. including the stuff at the bottom here. Control C, click into the notebook. This is my multi-sequence alignment. And I'm going to paste it. It won't be in color in this simple notebook. This should say Clustal. I must have missed the C. Okay, and I'm just going to leave that title. I will use those again, which is why they appear in my notebook. Just like I used my blast results today for tea coffee, I'm going to use this for the next phase of the project called a web logo, which is even prettier. So I'll look to see you there.